desalination of seawater has long been promoted as a way to provide potable water in areas that are short of potable water and that are close to the sea. Today, there are more than 21,000 seawater desalination plants in operation around the world. However, desalinizing seawater is an energy intensive process, and as a result, it is costly and often has a large carbon footprint. In this video, we will look at an, an alternative that is much less expensive and has a lower carbon footprint, namely reclaiming wastewater. Early shipboard desalination plants used relatively straightforward distillation techniques to produce potable water on board. Those plants were not very efficient, and several technological developments were introduced in large-scale desalination plants to make them less energy intensive. But the basic idea is still the same. The salty water is evaporated, leaving the salts behind, and the water vapor is cooled to produce potable water. Desalination plants using osmosis technology force water through a semi-permeable membrane to separate pure H2O from seawater or wastewater. Both forward osmosis and reverse osmosis, osmosis techniques can be used. Both types of desalination plants require pretreatment of the feed water to remove both organic and inorganic substances that can interfere with the desalination process, and post-treatment of desalinated water also is required. Water from the distillation process is completely devoid of minerals, so some remineralization is needed to bring the water back to normal mineral content for potable water and to prevent damage to pipes carrying the water. Post-treatment of water desalinized by reverse osmosic, osmosis techniques also requires steps to ensure that any pathogens that might penetrate the osmosis membranes are removed. The cost of desalinated water depends on many factors. Generally, larger scale plants are more efficient than smaller ones, and plants using osmosis generally are less energy intensive than comparable capacity distillation plants. For that reason, reverse osmosis has been favored for new de desalination plants outside of the Middle East. Seawater desalination plants are expensive to construct and typically require 25 acres or more of land at shore locations where land costs can be very high. The higher the salt content of the feed water, the more energy is required for the desalination process. In addition, since the potable water is produced at sea level, additional energy is needed to pump it inland to higher elevations. This can be a major expense if the areas needing the desalinated water are not near the source. For example, here in California, there is a great need for water to support agricultural operations in the Central Valley, but there is a mountain range between the Pacific Ocean and the valley. The cost to desalinate seawater using reverse osmosis range from about $3 per thousand gallons to $9 per thousand gallons. In comparison, the cost to desalinate brackish and wastewater runs between $1.10 to $2.50 per thousand gallons. Brackish and wastewater desalination also doesn't have the geographical limitations of seawater desalination. For example, La, the Las Vegas, Nevada area is able to reclaim more than 90% of the water used for indoor purposes and return it to Lake Mead. Unfortunately, about 50% of the potable water used in the Las Vegas area goes to outdoor uses. But with wastewater reclamation, the area achieves an overall recycling rate of about 40%. So for every 100 gallons of water drawn from Lake Mead, 40 gallons are returned. Here in Orange County, California, where I live, the Orange County Water District, which serves more than 2 million people in the central and northern part of the county, 
has teamed up with the Orange County Sanitation District to use reverse osmosis along with pre and post treatment to produce 100 million gallons of potable reclaimed water per day. And they will soon increase their capacity to 130 million gallons per day of reclaimed water. Elsewhere in Southern California, the Metropolitan Water District, which serves 19 million people, has plans for a 150 million gallon per day wastewater recycling facility in order to reduce its dependence on imported water to serve its customers. There also are significant environmental impacts from seawater desalination. The process produces brine that is very high in salt content that must be disposed of. This is returned to the ocean where it can have an impact on aquatic life. In addition, the chemicals used to pre-treat the seawater get used up and also have to be disposed of, which can, can produce environmental problems. Using desalination to produce potable water from domestic and industrial wastewater and from brackish water sources has many advantages over seawater desalination. These include lower cost, less energy demand, easier siting, and less impact on the environment. However, some people are put off by the notion that wastewater from toilets is ending up coming out of their faucets. However, the desalination process together with pretreatment and post-treatment processes produce, produces water that meets or exceeds all standards for potable water. And in areas where wastewater desalination is in use, there have not been any major problems from the public with its use. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave your comments on desalination in the comments section. And please take some time to watch some of my other videos on climate issues. Thanks again for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video.